March 8, 2014. More than 200 people vanish with Flight MH370. The official account says, only silent satellites observed the disaster. But deep in the Indian Ocean, specialized hydrophones quietly captured something else, a strange, unexplained acoustic signal matching the night and region of the jet's disappearance. If this underwater echo is not MH370, what did the ocean actually record? The answer could redefine how future mysteries are solved. Far below the surface of the Indian Ocean, a network of underwater microphones listens day and night. These hydroacoustic stations are the quiet sentinels of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, built to catch the faintest traces of underwater explosions and other low-frequency events. Two stations were standing watch on the night MH370 disappeared. One is Station HA01, anchored off Cape Leeuwin on Australia's southwest tip. The other is Station H08S, positioned near Diego Garcia in the heart of the Indian Ocean. Both were operational on March 8, 2014. HA-01 lies about 1,600 kilometers from the area. Investigators call the seventh arc the official crash corridor. H-08S sits much farther out, nearly 3,700 kilometers from that same line. Both stations use three hydrophones arranged in a triangle. That configuration lets analysts calculate the direction of distant sounds by measuring tiny differences in the time each sensor picks up a pressure wave. This hydroacoustic system can detect very low frequency signals over thousands of kilometers. It can hear earthquakes, submarine implosions, and the thunderous impact of a jet hitting the sea. An impact on the seventh arc would have to send a powerful pulse of energy through the water to be picked up so far away. On the night, MH370 vanished. Both Cape Leeuwin and Diego Garcia were recording continuously through the critical window. The logs from Cape Leeuwin confirm uninterrupted coverage and every second of data from that hour remains available to researchers. For Diego Garcia, the public record is less clear. Some researchers point to a possible 25-minute gap in the data around the time of the disappearance, but no official statement has resolved whether that was a technical outage or simply a period of silence in the ocean. The distances between these stations and the seventh arc matter. The closer Cape Leeuwin station is better positioned to catch an impact, while Diego Garcia's greater distance makes detection more challenging, especially if a signal is weak or masked by background noise. These are the reasons a signal might be recorded at one station and not the other and why every second of hydrophone data is so valuable when searching for the truth about MH370. Water carries sound farther than air, but not all sounds travel equally. Low frequency waves, especially those between 10 and 100 hertz, can cross entire ocean basins. These slow, deep rumbles slip through the water's natural sound channel, sometimes covering thousands of kilometers before fading into background noise. Hydrophones, like those at Cape Leeuwin, are tuned to pick up these distant signals, 
pressure pulses from earthquakes, the groan of shifting ice, and on rare occasions, the sudden impact of a large object hitting the sea. In the months after Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 vanished, researchers at Curtin University and the Integrated Marine Observing System turned to data from Cape Leeuwin and a local hydrophone moored off the Perth Canyon. They were not looking for a clear voice in the dark, but for any disturbance that matched the estimated time of the crash between 0010 and 0030 UTC on March 8, 2014. Within that window, they found an anomaly, a faint, low-frequency event that stood out from the usual oceanic hum. The team worked to trace the source, using the time each hydrophone picked up the signal and triangulating its rough location. But the numbers did not line up with expectations. The anomaly's estimated distance and direction did not match the path implied by the final satellite handshake, the so-called seventh arc, where search authorities believed the jet had gone down. The acoustic event seemed too close or pointed away from the corridor mapped by satellite data. With mounting pressure to focus resources, search planners made a choice. They set aside the acoustic lead, citing the mismatch in location and the risk of false positives from natural sources like ice or underwater landslides. Official investigations leaned heavily on satellite analysis and drift modeling, leaving the curtain anomaly as little more than a footnote. But for some, the fact that a signal appeared at the right time, even if not in the right place, suggested the ocean might still be holding answers missed in the first rush to judgment. Dr. Usama Kadri, a fluid dynamicist at Cardiff University, set out to answer a question that had hovered over the MH370 investigation for years. He asked whether a Boeing 737 striking the Indian Ocean near the seventh arc would have been heard by underwater microphones at Cape Leeuwin or Diego Garcia. To test this, Kadri built a reference library from a rare data set, 10 aircraft crashes and one submarine loss, all with known times and locations, each monitored by CTBTO hydrophone stations. His analysis showed that when a large aircraft hits the ocean, it generates a distinct low-frequency pressure pulse, a signal that can travel across 2,000 to 5,000 kilometers of water. These events leave a fingerprint, short energetic bursts that stand out from the ocean's usual background noise. Kadri turned to the records from March 8, 2014 focusing on the window around 0019 UTC, the moment of MH370's final satellite handshake. He combed through hours of hydrophone data from Cape Leeuwin and Diego Garcia using the same algorithms that had flagged pressure pulses from previous crashes. In the Cape Leeuwin data, he found a candidate, a weak six-second pressure event arriving just minutes after the last satellite ping. The signal's bearing, 306 degrees from the station, pointed roughly toward the northern stretch of the seventh arc, the region many believe holds the answer to MH370's fate. Kadri labeled it Signal 306, and he stresses that it is a candidate, not a discovery. No matching pulse appeared in the Diego Garcia records. The distance involved, more than 3,700 kilometers, may have been too great for such a faint signal to survive its journey through the ocean's deep sound channel. 
the amplitude at Cape Leeuwin was already near the threshold of detectability, far weaker than the signals from confirmed crashes in Kadri's reference set. Still, the timing and direction stood out. A real, unexplained pressure event recorded within minutes of the plane's disappearance, coming from a plausible bearing. Kadri cautions that it could be nothing more than background noise or a natural oceanic phenomenon. But for the first time, the ocean's record offered a signal that fit the basic parameters of what a crash impact might look like, even though the evidence remains far from conclusive. Alec Duncan, senior acoustics researcher at Curtin University, has spent years studying the hydrophone data from Cape Leeuwin. In his view, the Indian Ocean is filled with low-frequency signals, many of which have nothing to do with aircraft. During the Southern Hemisphere autumn, when MH370 vanished, Antarctic ice shelves are especially active. Collisions rifting and the slow grind of massive icebergs send deep rumbles across the ocean. These events can last from seconds to minutes, filling the water with diffuse, low-frequency energy that sometimes arrives from unexpected directions. Duncan cautions that with only one station picking up a weak signal, it is easy to misjudge the true source. Ocean currents, layers of warm and cold water, and even the shape of the seafloor can bend sound waves, making a southern ice event appear to come from the northwest. In his own reprocessing of the data from 2014, Duncan found no clear sharp signal from the official crash corridor, only the usual background of ice noise and distant quakes. This skepticism points to a deeper challenge. Without a second station confirming the same event, any bearing calculation carries a wide margin of error. A pressure pulse arriving from 306 degrees might have originated hundreds of kilometers away, refracted by ocean layers or scattered by underwater ridges. The ocean's complexity makes it difficult to distinguish between a rare impulsive aircraft impact and the more common lingering echoes of ice. To break this deadlock, Dr. Kadri has called for a direct experiment. His proposal is simple in concept and rigorous in practice. Conduct a series of controlled underwater blasts or air gun shots at known points along the seventh arc. Record those test signals at both Cape Leeuwin and Diego Garcia. With those recordings, scientists could map how sound travels under current ocean conditions and build a calibration for long-range hydroacoustic detection. If a blast from a specific location produces a strong, clear signal at the hydrophones, but nothing like it appears in the 2014 data, that area could be ruled out as MH370's final resting place. The idea is not speculative. There is a precedent in 2017, the Argentine submarine ARA San Juan vanished in the South Atlantic. Calibration blasts, Diem, combined with hydrophone data, helped narrow the search zone and ultimately led to the discovery of the wreck. For MH370, a similar calibration campaign could offer the first real chance to test whether the ocean's faintest signals hold the truth or only more questions. The debate over Signal 306 may never be settled, but targeted experiments would turn uncertainty into evidence and give investigators a clearer map of what the ocean was listening to that night. Ocean microphones captured a signal 
The night MH370 vanished. It remains unexplained, still unclaimed. Hydroacoustics can pinpoint disaster zones thousands of kilometers away. The ocean remembers what we struggle to find. Its hidden records may yet lead us to answers long thought lost. Share your thoughts below.